light from this candle burning bright light our way through dark of night help us find the way to you guide us touch us with your light oh Lord. light from this candle burning bright light our And uh, do we have, I just have to check here. Do we have Jimmy yet? I don't think so. I don't see him in our list. Patient and persistent God, we gather in your presence, polished and presentable, as if we knew what to expect, as if this were a predictable place to simply observe. Holy One, forgive our lukewarm expectations, in the mystery of your love, overshadow us. Plant the seeds of your saving good news in our hearts until we bloom to serve a world that is hurting. Amen. And adapted from God's grace, from Romans 8.1, is our assurance of grace. God's grace is always with us. For those who are in Christ Jesus, the weight of sin is lifted, for the Spirit of God dwells in you. In the name of Jesus, you are forgiven. Amen. And Sandy will lead us in our Gloria. Peace of Christ be with you always, and also with you. And Gavin will unmute us so we can all say hello. Gavin won't do it. I thought Gavin wasn't here. Hello, peace he be with you. Just joined us. Welcome, Gavin. Hi. Peace be with you. Hi. Good morning, Hi. everyone. Hello. Hi, Sylvia. Hi. There's Sylvia. Do we have Anne? Hi. Did Miss Anne get in? I haven't heard from her. Yes, Peace, I of Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ, yeah. Morning, Sandra. Morning, Sandra. Where's old Sandra in too? Good. Ping, thanks, you, Marion. Oh, you're very welcome. I'm so happy. And are you still in Quebec, Bruce, or are you back? Oui, je suis en Quebec. Ah, <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's pass over to Christopher and he'll share the first reading from Genesis. God's word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. May it illuminate our thoughts and our minds. This reading comes from Genesis 25 verses 19 to 34. This is an account of the family line of Abraham's son, Isaac. Abraham became the father of Isaac, and Isaac was 40 years old when he married Rebekah, the daughter of Bethuel, the Aramean, from Padan Aram, and sister of Laban, the Aramean. Isaac prayed to the Lord on behalf of his wife because she was childless. The Lord answered his prayer, and his wife, Rebekah, became pregnant. The babies jostled each other within her. And she said, why is this happening to me? So she went to inquire of the Lord. The Lord said to her, two nations are in your womb and two peoples from within you will be separated. 
one people will be stronger than the other, and the older will serve the younger. But the time came for her to give birth. There were two twin boys in her womb. The first to come out was red, and his whole body was like a hairy garment. So they named him Esau. After this, his brother came out with his hand grasping Esau's heel. So he was named Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when Rebekah gave birth to them. The boys grew up and Esau became a skillful hunter, a man of the open country, while Jacob was content to stay at home among the tents. Isaac, who had a taste for wild game, loved Esau, but Rebekah loved Jacob. Once, when Jacob was cooking some stew, Esau came in from the open country. Famished, he said to Jacob, quick, let me have some of that red stew. I'm famished. That is why he was also called Edom. Jacob replied, first, sell me your birthright. Look, I'm about to die, Esau said. What good is the birthright to me? But Jacob said, swear to me first. So he swore an oath to him, selling his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau some bread and some lentil stew. He ate and drank, then got up and left. So Esau despised his birthright. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And we'll pass over to Marion and Suzanne and Sandy, and they'll share Psalm 119 with us. Uh, Psalm 19 is in... a lamp for my feet and a light for my path. I have sworn an oath and confirmed it to keep your righteous judgments. I am in deep distress. Give me life, O God, according to your word. Accept, O God, the willing tribute of my lips and teach me your decrees. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light. I take my life into my hands continually, yet I never forget your law. The wicked have laid a snare for me, but I have not strayed from your precepts. Your testimonies are my heritage forever, the very joy of my heart. I have set my heart to fulfill your statutes forever, even to the end. Your word is a lamp for my feet and a light for my path. And Marion will offer the gospel, and we have a little surprise for you at the end of the gospel today. Cool. Uh, the gospel reading today is Matthew chapter 13, verses 1 to 9 and 18 to 23. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it, while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. 
when anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop yielding a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. The good news of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be God. Okay, I'm just going to stop sharing. We'll, we'll go to our video before uh, we do our song. Oh, uh, Gavin, can you pass back to me? Cause I, or, or give me the right to share screen. I thought it Did that come up? Okay, let's go on here. There it goes. The sower went forth to sow, and when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some an hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Why speakest thou unto them in parables? Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it is not given. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away, even that he hath. Therefore I speak to them in parables. Because they seeing, see not. And hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. 
and in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Esaias, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand. And seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their hearts, and should be converted, and I should heal them. Blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see, and have not seen them. And to hear those things which ye hear, and have not heard them. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not. Then cometh the wicked one, and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. But he that received the seed into stony places, the same is he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receiveth it. Yet hath he not root in himself, but doeth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by he is offended. He also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word, and the care of this world and deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becometh unfruitful. But he that receives seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word, and understandeth it. Which also beareth fruit, and bringeth forth some an hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. And we'll pass over to Sandy for Soil of God, number 174 from More Voices. And Sandy, I just got to find you here, buddy. Now, when I mute myself, I stay muted. So. <laughs> Together, this is holy ground. 
as I read through our text for this morning, and Sandy found that uh, video of the gospel, which was uh, really quite interesting to see that come alive after hearing it read, I thought of rocky soil. And certainly the heat of these past few days left much of the soil, grass, plants, and trees parched and yearning for water until the heavens opened on Friday night and brought welcome relief of both heat and humidity. The soil was cracked and dry, the grass mostly brown with a few green patches, will now revive as it drinks the living water into its cells and reinvigorates. For our gardens and farmers and fields, water is so critical, as too is the quality of the soil. Rich, fertile soil can produce great yields, feeding all who rely upon it to sustain them. Yet without enough precipitation, that same soil becomes hard and dry and cracked and craggy. The top layer blows away, revealing a rocky base that offers little to plants trying to survive or new ones trying to root. The soil becomes rocky. It becomes hard to work and hard to nourish. As the drier the soil gets, the less receptive it is to absorbing the very water it so desperately needs to once again be able to nourish life. As spirit nourishes us, tries to reinvigorate us, I pose a question, what kind of soil are we? Are we fertile, open to embracing the healing love that emanates from spirit? Are we interested in exploring the way of Jesus, a unique way of moving in the world? Or are we dry, craggy, and uninterested in learning anything new? Interested only in what serves us at any particular moment. Such a way, I suggest, is not life-giving. Can new ways of being be planted upon our heart and souls? I suggest to you that yes, this is a possibility, if we set such an intention. An intention to allow nurture, to allow new ideas, to allow self-examination, and then embark upon it. Like the farmer who discovers that the soil is too acidic for a particular crop, once the crop rotation is changed, plants bloom and flourish. Our gospel today tells us of a parable Jesus shared with those gathered round him. Tossing seeds about, some root and grow strong. Others hold their own for a little bit, a little bit. Others wither quickly. He talks about the quality of the soil and the difference it makes to the seeds. Rocky soil is rocky. Nothing grows. Or does it? I grew up in Nova Scotia. Early years were spent at the cottage in Shad Bay. The shore was rocky and rugged, with a small sand beach at the bottom of what seemed like an enormous hill. As well, there would be an annual day trip during the summer to Peggy's Cove, about a half hour drive away. There we would see massive glaciated rocks with little ponds in between, scraggy trees, very little grew. Looked a bit like Mars. Yet in between the rocks, as you hop from one section to the other, sometimes you'd find a tiny little tree or a beautiful flower. The fearsome winds had blown soil into the crack between the rocks. A seed had also been caught by the wind and dropped on this very spot, as if by some miracle, and amongst these awesome giant boulders that were as tall as two-story buildings was this petite little green tree or a bright purple flower. In the midst of all these uninhabitable boulders and rocky granular soil that appeared impenetrable, the wind had gathered enough fertile soil to allow a singular seed to root and something to grow, standing strong in the salty air. If we but open ourselves ever so slightly to the possibility of spiritual growth, something happens. A little seed of faith and hope finds a corner in which to root, and when nourished, begins to grow. Two thousand years later, Jesus offers us the same opportunity that he offered the seeds as they scattered across the soil. Those that root in fertile would grow. They will flourish and grow, and those that do not have a secure footing will flounder and shrivel up. We need to examine what type of soil we are. Are we rocky and craggy, not really interested in growing, not interested in growing in new ways, or are we receptive to exploring new ways of being, welcoming the presence of spirit into our lives? 
for when we open ourselves ever so slightly, interesting things may happen. The light of Christ creeps into some of those dark places where we like to hide and illuminates a new path for us to journey upon, a path of healing and love, of light and joy, a place where we allow ourselves to experience being embraced by spirit each and every day. Amen. Sandy has prepared a, a new song for us he composed, and I'm just going to change screens here, and we'll share that with you. Oops. And Gavin, can you pass back to me? Thank you. Okay, one sec. Just stop. Something happened. Let's try that again. Share screen. <clears throat> there. Was it going okay and then stopped? Yeah, it was. Okay. Then. Okay, try again.
be upright in praising your name, in praising your name. And we have, I think we have Jimmy with us now. Let's see, one second here. Let me just find you, Jim. There we are. And you are unmuted. There you go. Giver of life as the sower cast seeds abundantly, hopefully, so we long to participate in your seeding of the world. Receive this gift as part of our lives. Send your cultivating spirit to work among us until we grow and bear fruit and grace, for we pray in the name of Jesus, who came out of love for the world. Amen. And Sandy, over to you for our doxology. Grant us, God, the grace of giving with a spirit large and free that ourselves and all our living think we may offer faithfully. And we'll now move into our prayers of the people, and I'd ask Suzanne to lead us off. Tender loving God, you formed the earth to be a place of joy and abundance for all your creatures. For food in all of its variety and the people who grow it, transport it, and market it, we give you thanks. These days of pandemic have shown us how much we depend on others. We pray for those who do not have enough food and for those whose agricultural supply is at risk through the extreme weather, uncertain prices, and social upheaval. Help us care for the earth and its fruitfulness and for each other in our common need of its fruits. God, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And we'll pass over to Sheldon. God of all nations, you gather people together in communities to care for each other and enjoy each other's company and creativity. Yet the pandemic has revealed there are so many vulnerable people, so many places where resources are not shared fairly. Where there is division, bring unity and peace with justice. Where people are distracted, give wisdom to see what is important. Where people are tired and anxious, bring strength and courage. God, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. And don't think Verona's with us. So, God of compassion, you call us to be communities held together by prayer and love for our neighbors, where people mourn loss of any kind, provide comfort. Where there is illness and pain, bring healing. Where there is distress or discouragement, transform fear into hope. By your spirit, equip us to serve one another in Christ's name, so that your compassion touches lives and love and mercy. God, in your mercy. Here. here. Over to you, Christopher. And for all in need of your healing love, O oh Lord, or people and intentions we name aloud or hold silently in our hearts. For Anne, for Mary, for Ella, for Dave. John Jones. For Polly. For Ian and his family in Egypt. And for James.
for Kathy, for Bruce. Polly. For all those named and intentions offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Prayer. And in the words Christ taught us to pray, we sing. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and Well, thank you again, everyone, for being with us this morning. Our reopening committee will meet once again as our usual time, Monday at 2 o'clock. And same link as today, or you can dial in. And just a reminder that although we're not using our church building right now, the costs of the church continue with utilities and maintenance and insurance. Um, and if you are able to send along a post-data check, or you can also use the Canada Helps website with a credit card. And the link is there, and this will be up on our website as well. Just select Hope United and then click on the connection and use the donate now and then proceed. Um, please note that Canada Helps does levy a 4% charge. Any questions, just give us a call. And we'll be online again next Sunday at 11 a.m. And for any pastoral emergencies, please reach out to me by email or don't hesitate to give me a call on my cell. Thank you so much. And thanks for all the great participation today. And um, hope everyone has a great week. And over to Marion for our closing prayer. For in your tender compassion, you shoulder our burdens and ease our heavy hearts. Give us the strength to carry each other as you have carried us. Amen. And as long as this works, I'll bring you, we're going to, this is the pipe organ from Hope United, and hopefully it will work. How firm a foundation, you servants of God, is laid for your faith in God's excellent word. What more can be said than to you has been said? To you who for refuge to Jesus have fled. Oh, Jesus.
Jesus has leaned for repose. I will not, I will not desert to his foes. That soul through all hell should be never to shake. Oh, never, no, never, no, never forsake. Christopher, for our benediction and blessing. May you go forth, sowing the seed of God's new world, and give thanks, for God will supply the growth. Go forth in joy, and be led back in peace, this day and always. Walk in love as you grow into the world. Walk in peace with everyone you meet. May God's grace touch your heart, mind, and soul. This day and evermore, amen, amen. Hallelujah and amen. Thanks, Sandy. And Gavin, if you want to stop the recording.